Do you ever feel stuck, like you're living your life on autopilot? Are you ready to shift into high gear and reach the success you so richly deserve? Welcome to the Play Big Movement podcast. I am your host, Sharon Lecter, entrepreneur, business strategist, and best-selling author. Playing big is not about settling for good enough or being comfortable. It is about reaching your highest potential and achieving your greatest success. Join me in my Play Big Movement as I interview top experts in business, money, and entrepreneurship, all ready to serve you and to help you play big, be number one in your field, live your legacy, and create maximum impact. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this segment of the Play Big Movement podcast with Sharon Lecter. A lot of times I introduce someone to each of you when I'm meeting them as well, but Kim and Mike Barnes I've known for quite a while, and they are rock stars, and I want to welcome them to you. Thank you guys so much for being with me today. Thank you. We're glad to be with you. Yeah, thanks for having us. Well, it's fun, and I'm just so proud of what you're doing. You know, I teach um, the most successful businesses solve a problem and serve a need, and what you're going to hear about today are two people that have established incredible careers in media who took the bull by the horn and said, we need to do something about this. Mm-hmm. And they created a, a movement called Parenting Aging Parents. And I'm excited about it. I kind of been in from the beginning with them and watched it grow and watched the, the really serving something for people that have parents so that you end up becoming their parents and having to take care of them. And I'm just so thrilled. They launched it in 2021 and it's just growing like wildfire. And I'm really proud of both of you. Um, you know, Kim, you were a a broadcaster and and Mike and a very famous sports broadcaster. So very excited to have you guys here. But I want you to kind of talk about that initial. We should do this, <laughs> um, and and but before we get to that point, because that's obviously the point of this. But I want you to tell me a little bit more about Little Kim and Little Mike, your background. <laughs> You, you go first, Lil' Kim. Uh, well, you, you straight out of college, I wanted I had wanted to be a reporter or and be in news so so much uh, while I was in college, and that's what I did. So I was a reporter, and then eventually started anchoring as well. Uh, did that for fifteen years, and then when that was going to be complicated, uh, I decided to step back and uh, d- did some other things. Uh, but also, but even still started, kept coaching and, and working with people who wanted to be able to be on camera, do media interviews and that kind of thing. Got a chance to teach at the University of Texas, uh, which was really fun. Uh, did lots of different kinds of things. Um, and then we started working together, doing media training and on-camera coaching and training throughout the years. And I continued to do on-air work and voiceover and corporate um, videos and things like that. Uh, but it was as we were working together uh, in our training that we kind of stumbled accidentally, if you will, upon what we're doing now. Yeah. I, uh, I always grew up being a big sports fan from a very early age. And I was one of those strange kids, I guess you could say that I knew in elementary school, what I wanted to be when I grew up. Of course, I wanted to be three things. I wanted to be quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys. I wanted to be right fielder for the Texas Rangers. And I wanted to be a sportscaster. <laughs> and around 1977 or so, I thought it could be all three at the same time. I had it figured out baseball and then morph into football season. And then there'd be about a month, month and a half where I could be a sportscaster. And I was going to do it all year round. The baseball and football stuff didn't come to fruition, but I got to be a sportscaster for about 30 years. And I was very lucky because uh, you don't see many people work at the same station for 29 years, but I did that. But the, the crazy life of TV news caught up with me and I lost my job in 2019 and then teamed with Kim with Barnes mm-hmm. Team Media to coach people about being better communicators, whether it was on video or, or in person. And then um, while that was going on, my mom has Alzheimer's and it's happened. It's been going on for about 10 years now, but as it got worse and worse and worse, uh, my sister and I first approached my dad about the fact that he was spending so much time taking care of her as they lived at, 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 at home in the house they lived in about an hour East of Dallas that said, it'd be better for you. It'd be better for mom. If y'all moved into an independent living place. And kind of reluctantly at first, but eventually said, okay. And they did. And it was great for everybody. But mom's Alzheimer's still got worse and worse and worse. So about three years ago, uh, I went up to the Dallas area and got together with my sister. And we went and looked at four different independent, uh, I'm sorry, four different memory care places. And we thought we were very prepared because my, my dad's always had us with a copy of wills and power of attorneys and, and 
medical directives. We had everything and we've talked about money with him. So we knew what he could afford. So it wasn't like we were going to find a $10,000 place and I can only afford a thousand dollars. So we thought we were so prepared. It'd be like looking for an apartment. <laughs> we did that in our early twenties. So that's pretty easy. <laughs> but we got in there and started looking at these four places and felt so overwhelmed because we had no idea what we were looking for, <clears throat> no idea what questions to ask, no idea what the red flags would be. And I came back from that and came back, back here to Austin and told Kim, I said, I felt like if we were felt that prepared and felt that overwhelmed, most people are really overwhelmed. So we should start something, I don't know, maybe a Facebook group to try and <clears throat> help people get through all this trouble. And from that evolved this incredible group that just, I, knew, I remember when you had 300 members and you were excited. Now you're well over 3,000, we're like closer to 4,000 by now. And so you, you really hit a nerve of people that really are seeking that kind of help. And really just, just know that you're not the only one is very, very helpful. But you guys took it a step further and you created a program and a booklet for people to help them. So talk a little bit about how, how this grew from the idea stage to actually making it happen. You know, it was from when, when Mike first had the idea three years ago or so and came back, I just said, wow, oh, you know, I don't, this kind of sounds depressing, you know, to have to talk about this all the time. But what I realized, and so we kind of put it, I, we put it on the back burner. We were actually really busy because it was in the height of the pandemic. We were teaching a lot of people how to be on camera, how, so, to, be on Zoom. how to be on Zoom. So uh, we were really pretty busy in that, in that realm. So we kind of put it on the back burner, but it had been percolating a little bit. And then what happened was when Mike's mom moved to memory care in March of 2021, he posted just one thing on social media. And what I noticed that in addition to, of course, people being empathetic, what I really picked up on was the fact, the numbers of people that were saying, oh my gosh, I've done the same thing. I'm in the middle of it, or I see it coming and not just Alzheimer's, but just any kind of that extra care with your parents. And so I, I went to Mike and I said, you're right. You're right. We should do something. We should help people because it is, it is so lonely. And that was something that we discovered in that interim period from when he first had the idea to when we actually launched it was, you know, there were many days that I was sitting in my, at my desk talking to my mom about something about rearranging a doctor's appointment, or maybe she'd gotten scammed again. I'd hear Mike in the other room talking about something as well with his dad. And I just thought, oh my gosh, this is in the middle of our workday. And one of our kids might've been asking a question at the same time that you wanted to be able to help them with. And so I just was like, you are right. This is so overwhelming to be in that, that push pull of, I wanna be able to help them. I wanna help my kids. I wanna help my parents. I need to work, you know, all of those things at the same time. So, that, so we started sort of accidentally, if you will, <laughs> we thought, well, let's just put up a Facebook group. Yeah. And we realized quickly that while there were hundreds and then dozens that yes, there's absolutely a need. And when we started the group, we wanted to do something special, not just open the group and say, okay, go ahead and chat amongst yourselves. We thought we could use our expertise as former journalists to, to interview mm -hmm. experts, whether it was attorneys or doctors or insurance people, Medicare people, Medicaid people, about all the topics that there are so many things out there that you're kind of lost about. And you just need some more information to figure out who I can talk to or I didn't even know that was that was available. So we thought we'd post that that would really help people. And I think that really has. But the other thing that we started noticing after we started the group and people started commenting is that so many people feel so alone mm -hmm. when they have these problems with their mom or dad, because when you have kids, it's, it's kind of similar because you have no idea what you're doing, <laughs> but it's always good news. You, you love talking about your babies about, you know, hey, little Brandon's going to start to crawl. Little Brandon is, you know, sleeping through the night. Little Brandon is doing this. And it's fun. And everyone around you, whether it's neighbors or coworkers or friends or family, they all have advice for you. <laughs> but when you have a mom with Alzheimer's, it's just depressing. And nobody likes to talk about it. When you have a, a parent with incontinence or heart problems or anything like that, it's mm -hmm. just blah, no one wants to talk about it. So you feel so alone. And because nobody talks about it, we can't help each other yeah. right. because if we don't know what our friends or our neighbors are going through, we can't offer maybe some insight or share experiences. And that's something that I've found within the group that has been so, so valuable. Well, and also I think, you know, we've just been through the same thing with my experience and is you, you don't know what you don't know until you get into the thick of it. Exactly. So having a resource to support you. I mean, we didn't even think about the fact that when Mike, we have power of attorneys, but when they die, power of attorney dies with it. Yeah. And so it's like, those are things that, and we're pretty smart in this area. I mean, yeah. from a finance perspective, my, Mike from an attorney perspective, but yeah. you know, there are things that you just don't know, you don't know. And you have to try and put, 
the sooner you can put the things in process um, in mm-hmm. place, the easier transition you're going to have. So yeah, absolutely. Well, and that's one of the things I think we've tried to help people with is if you're in the middle of the crisis here, come let us support you and, and, and know that you're not alone. And what are maybe the things that you can do to help make that not as hard, but especially before you're actually in that crisis, what are the things you can do to be prepared so that then you can focus just on the crisis at hand and it not be so many levels deep because of all of the other things that haven't been taken care of either. And it's frankly a lot easier to have those conversations with your parents when it's not an issue, you know, when it's kind of a, not joking, but kind of like, Hey, so what are you thinking that you'll want to do, you know, when you're 95 and you can't, drive anymore, or you can't live by yourself, you know, what are you open to, you know, being able to have those conversations when they're able-bodied often is a little easier, I think. Oh, absolutely. And I think you also created a product for people because it's, you know, we think we have everything together or we, you know, we, we think we know where it is at their house. And then you find out you don't, you can't have a, find all the pieces that you need. So you've created something that helps people get organized. Share a little bit about that. This was a little bit selfish on my part because it was, I realized that I had this file folder of just all this loose paper and sticky notes and the doctors, the doctor's office would say, Hey, did she have a shingle shot? And I was like, Oh, I think so. Or you think you can remember all this stuff. And I was scrambling through all these bits and pieces of paper. So we, we put together basically a guidebook. It's called the caregiver's key. That is just a place to be able to keep all that information in one place so that you can one, even Think about the things that you might need to know, you know, where is their passport kept? Do where's the, you know, where's the title to the car? Who's their neurologist? Who mows their grass? You know, all of those kinds of pieces of information that can be really helpful. Yeah. Cause there's so much out there. Think about what's involved in your life and all of the things. And if somebody just stepped in to take over all the things that they would need to know, and it's the same thing. You, you need to know all the different bank accounts, all the different investments that they have. You need to know if they owe money somewhere, if someone owes them money, Mm -hmm. just things like that, just so you have a grasp on things Mm -hmm. because you don't want to take over and be in the dark because that's what so many people are, That especially people in our group who talk to us about it, that they don't really understand or they don't know what what mom or dad have been doing. So then when they do have to take over, like I don't know what I'm doing Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. I don't know what they're doing and they haven't told me anything. And when you get like that, you just get so overwhelmed that you can't concentrate on the true matter at hand. It's also, there's so many scams out there right now. Um, We just had one where um, I've taken over the maintenance of my father-in-law's house. He's in a memory care unit. And so we're trying to, you know, get all that put together. And I have been paying his bills for years, but um, I had something come in about a renewal for pest control. And it literally looked like a renewal. And I'm looking at this going, I don't remember seeing this anywhere. And I called them and I literally, they two were talking to me about, yeah, this is going to continue the coverage. And I'm going, all right. Mm -hmm. I I almost paid it. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, wait a minute. I don't see this anywhere in the documentation. And the, you know, the guy hung up on me, but it's, you know, it's one of those things where you just have, particularly for elders and seniors, I think they, they get subject to so many scams. You have to be careful. And if you don't know it going in, you can be caught yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, because we see things all the time that look fairly legitimate that come in. And just like, to your point, seeing something that looked, okay, this must be the service he used and I should continue it. But especially our our parents. I mean, my mom has been scammed numerous times and I check her email every single day, multiple times to try to pull that spam out first. And they're getting they're getting sneakier and sneakier to where now it, most of them are coming in and it, as an image in the email so that mm-hmm. it, the spam bot, you know, the, the, the email service providers can't even spot it, detect it as spam. So it ends up in their inbox and mom's like, oh my gosh, Norton says I owe the money or PayPal or Amazon or whoever. And, you know, when you look at who it's really from, you can tell, oh, it's some, you know, gibberish email address. That's not real, but mm-hmm. it scares them. And they're used to trusting people. Sure. Because you want to be able to trust people. And yeah, oh, oh gosh, there's a special place for people who take advantage of those, especially the elderly. Yeah, I, I kid my dad seriously in some ways, but I tell him he's 84 years old and he's, I tell him he's incredibly selfish and incredibly stubborn, but he's kind of earned that right with what he's done through the years, but he does so many things because he wants to do it. Even if I tell him something else, he wants to do it and he does it that way. I can tell you so many stories about it, but I taught him a long time ago when he sees a suspicious email forward it to me. Just forward it to me. 
And he still does it to this day. He never clicks on anything. He never opens anything that he shouldn't. He always forwards it to me. I'm like, thank you, dad. Right. Thank you in this case for not being stubborn and for doing what I said. Right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. It is so important because there's just more and more. I mean, we're inundated with those spams and things that are scams that are trying to get us to buy into things, even as you know, not just seniors, but all of us. And oh, for sure. it's important to just be aware and, and do your due diligence. <laughs> but you've also created a membership, I believe, within your within your seniors group. So t- talk to me a little bit about that. Within Parenting Aging Parents, we have the Facebook group and we want that to stay free. And we have the dozens of interviews that Mike talked about that are on our website now. And we want that to be accessible to people. But we wanted to be able to give people who want just additional um, assistance or help uh, an opportunity. So we have created a membership and we have been doing live Q and A's. We have one coming up soon, uh, talking about legal questions, because we just know that every situation is a little bit different. So even when we can give you the, do the interviews to help you sort of know the questions to maybe ask, or, oh, that's something I didn't even know that I should be thinking about. Okay. That's good. But oftentimes how does it relate to me specifically and our situation? So being able to have these live Q and A's and being able to have some additional um, uh, expertise for them is something that we are excited to be able to provide within that. Yeah, and we, we truthfully, we have hopes and dreams about it that as we get bigger and bigger with more and more people in the group and we're able to get more and more sponsors and you know partnering sponsors that help us that they can provide discounts you know, whether it's a someplace to live or memory care, or independent living or something like <clears> that, <throat> or a, a, a product or anything like that, that, that you think, okay, if I'm, I'm spending X amount of dollars to be a member of this, I'm going to save so much just by this great discount. It's a no brainer. Right. Well right. So, so we have, we have hopes and dreams of, of, of helping so many people because so many people out there need the assistance. They're just not sure what they mm-hmm. need yet. Well, I think your track record proves that those hope and dreams are going to come to reality. So I'm proud for both of you. I'm going to invite you to stay with me. We're going to do another shorter interview for the private Facebook group, um, Play Big Movement. But our listeners and viewers may want to, rather than just joining the Play Big, the uh, Parenting Aging Parents web uh, Facebook group, how else can they find you guys? The easiest thing is just to go to the website. Also by the same name, parentingagingparents.com. That's where you'll see all the additional uh, interviews. There's also a link for the caregiver's key, which is both in a physical and a digital copy, um, as well as there's a button to join the Facebook group. There's also a link on there as well if somebody wants to become a member of, we call them a family member of, uh, of Parenting Aging Parents. And actually one little perk they get is when they join, they immediately get the digital version of that caregiver's key, which is that the, the guide with all of the <clears throat> things that you need to know. And somebody has been listening to us, they might actually want to get some media training. So how do they <laughs> find you from that perspective? Barnsteammedia.com. And all right. we're, we're easy to find in both uh, cases, Mike at Parenting Aging Parents, Mike at Barnsteammedia.com, yeah. Kim at Parenting Aging Parents, Kim at Barnsteammedia.com. So we're, we're able to help lots of people in various ways. That's fabulous. Well, thank you so much for what you're doing. Um, you know, many of us have already felt that, that the stress and the strain and the pain of parenting our aging parents, but I, I know you're providing a service that's going to help so many people. So I appreciate both of you and thank you so much for being with me today. And you're going to hang out with me for a moment or two more. All right. You bet. For the rest of you, thank you so much for being part of this episode of um, the Play Big Movement podcast with Sharon Lecter. And until next time, if you're not part of the private Facebook group, make sure you join so you get that additional tidbit. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to this segment of the Play Big Movement podcast. Please subscribe to iTunes and leave us a review, as well as join us in other areas of social media, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn at Sharon Lecter, and for Facebook, author Sharon Lecter. Thank you so much and have a fabulous day.